Good morning, Legacy Church. We're so excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We would love for you guys to make your way inside as we begin to bring ourselves into a moment with God today. Uh, We ask that you take a moment now to direct your attention to the screen as we begin our worship service. Let's stand and lift our praise to him. Just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes are open to see, my heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that a God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Just one word, you heal what's broken inside me. Just one word, and you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see, my heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do, there's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's no power like the power of 
of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing, there's nothing that Jesus can't do. Oh, there's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a prison wall He can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. nothing he can't do. You know, whatever you came in here with this morning, whatever thoughts on your mind, you know, you know who can handle all of it? We just sang, there's nothing God can't do. It doesn't matter what situation it is. So as we continue to worship the mighty God that will do anything for us, let's lift his name together. in your hands this whole world may hold me down but it can never drown you out I'm not merely flesh and bone I was made for something the dark I hear your voice rising up I will rejoice for I was lost but now I am found cause even death can't hold you down you are God you're the great I am breath of life I breathe you in Sovereign over every 
Christ who lives within me. Christ who lives within me. From beginning to the end, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. Christ who lives within me. From beginning to the end, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You are God. You're the great I am. Breath of life, I breathe you in. Welcome to Legacy Church. You may be seated. There's a passage in Psalm chapter 46 that says, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the whole world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Church, would you pray with me? God, maybe even though it's been break week this past week, maybe we need to just kind of um, shift down to neutral right now, out of drive, out of full steam ahead, just to cease our striving and, and be still, seeking to hear that small voice that will never shout out at us. You are a refuge, our stronghold, God, for every person, every person on this world. And may every person come to a place, Father, to worship you, to love you, to see you as king of the world, and that all nations of the earth will eventually recognize your lordship. Pick us today. May we recognize your lordship in our life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I'm Tammy, and I'm so glad to worship with you today. Um, I want to share just um, a few uh, ministry opportunities. First of all, um, we have many ways to give, and thank you for being such a faithful giving church. Appreciate it so much. If, um, your giving makes ministry possible to continue. Some of those ministries that will continue specifically this week, we have a senior adult luncheon this Wednesday, and at the same time, on Wednesday, maybe you are aware of the Lenten schedule, but we celebrate Ash Wednesday. And in Mod 300, an Ash Wednesday come and go service um, throughout the day will be available to you. Mod 300 will be unlocked. And you can come, be still, and recognize um, God's goodness and God's grace and his sacrifice on our part um, through the life of Jesus Christ. So feel free to come and go anytime on Wednesday to participate in just a self-guided time with Jesus for Ash Wednesday. Also, this Saturday is um, a ladies' event for um, 
all ladies, obviously, on Saturday morning starts at 9.30, a time for worship and a time to hear stories. The theme is God writes our story, and if you have not registered yet, I want to encourage you to do that. You can register online, or you can um, see me today and let me know that you plan to attend. We're going to have brunch together, worship together, hear from our very own legacy ladies from both Marietta and Canton campuses, and I'm super excited um, to celebrate just a wonderful time together. Immediately after worship today, church, um, if those of you who plan to and want to even find out more information about going to South Dakota Indian Reservation this summer, the trip takes place in July. And if you want to know more information about this opportunity, um, if you would gather in the kids' wing, the big classroom in the kids' wing immediately after worship today um, for more information pretty excited about that event. We won't be in Mod 300. It's too wet to run through the rain. So we'll meet in, in the kids' wing instead. I want to invite Pastor Nate to come and lead us in a time of prayer um, for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, we are all troubled and concerned about our world situation and the fact that the Ukrainians have come under fire. And rather than get real newsy or try to be profound with this, I think what God is calling us to is a season of prayer. Many of our national spiritual leaders have called us into prayer and declared certain points of time prayer. And please join that. As you see those um, things occurring, those times announced, join with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. But this morning, just as Legacy Church, and I know Canton has done the same in their service today, we want to just pause for a moment. And so if you would, and if you're online, if you would just take a posture uh, of prayer um, and watching this and join us in a time of prayer. I won't try to wax eloquent by any means, uh, but I will voice some of the prayer. But mainly in your own heart and in your own mind, would you posture yourself before God knowing that he hears and he answers the prayers of his followers. And then as we end our prayer together, I'm going to ask you to stand uh, as we will end with the Lord's Prayer and will direct us right into a time of powerful worship this morning. Because what we need today more than anything is to speak the name of Jesus. Would you just bow your heads and if you would be so inclined, if you want to take a position, if you want to kneel at your chair or you just want to... Um, Bend your head down, or if you want to lift your head up to, the, to God, whatever is a posture of reverence for you now at this time. And the same if you're watching online, just to, just to bow our head and our hearts before God this morning. Father, the cry of our heart is to follow you. And God, today we know that in that followership, we will recognize tools of the enemy. We will recognize things that bring evil among us, selfish things, things that show hunger for powers, things that, that are not godly in any means, things that don't show your love. And Lord, today we just come against those things in the name of Jesus. Whether it be right here in our midst or whether it be worldwide or whether it be over in Ukraine. We claim the power of God. Lord, we know that we have, we have fellow congregations, our church here as sister congregations in Ukraine that are crying out to you today. It is sobering to learn that some of these, this faith community has reached out or, or our community here has reached out to them here in America. And we wanted to let them know that we were praying for them. And I know of one organization that got a hold of someone from their organization, got over there, and they said, please know that we are praying. And they said, we don't know if we'll be here tomorrow or not. But thank you. And so God, today we are humbled. And we bring ourselves before you in a posture of recognition that you are God and you are all powerful. But God... Even though you have power over sin and death and the grave, unless hearts are opened to the message of the cross, there is no remission of sins, there is no remorse of sin, 
And so, God, today, we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will guard the faithful people in Ukraine, that you will be with them in that country. Lord, if you were, would extend your hand to them. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray the name of Jesus over that country and, and over those who intrude. We believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that if, if those in power would come to know Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit would come in and radically change. And we believe that can happen as well, God, because you died once for all. And so we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to sweep amongst those who are in conflict. But God, we are humbled today that we can gather here today in our, in our building in freedom and that you have allowed us to be here today. And so we lift up and we intercede for the people of Ukraine. And now, Lord, as we stand together acknowledging your lordship, we pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray. And we will use the original translation of the manuscript, Debtors, today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now just for a moment, would you bow your heads and in silent and prayerful hearts just offer your own intercession today for peace in our nation. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there's a peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Burn like a fire 
Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, oh, shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family. Shadows burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is a peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, fifth graders and younger can meet the volunteers, the teachers out in the lobby if you want to make a run for it. Did I say run for it? Adults, um, I just want to remind you that um, to be in prayer for one another and to be specifically praying for our parents, there's a wonderful ministry called Family Life that um, is, has a great resource, and I emailed that to parents of fifth graders and younger late last night, just kind of feeling compelled in my soul, that is a resource to help us know how to um, communicate what's going on in our world without alarm, but with confidence that Jesus has got this, and we're the models of showing that to our families, whether we're parents of teenagers or we work with teenagers, and it's a phenomenal resource, and that ministry, again, is called Family Life, and if you would go to that resource and check it out, it's a great guide. How do you talk about this? with your families? How do you talk about this when you're gathered around a dining room table Amen. with little people and with teenagers? We do talk about it. It's what we do, and we talk about it with the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Tammy. This morning is a very difficult subject to talk about, and it's our last sermon in the series of Kingdom Economics. But if we want to build our growth, and if we want to build power within the bank of the kingdom, we're going to need to learn this very, very important, really basic victory, and that is called selflessness. Selfishness is really hard to preach on because I struggle with it. It's at the very basic nature of sin. It's at the very basic nature of humankind. In fact, Pastor Matthew Kratz tells this story. A mom was getting ready to fix a nice pancake breakfast for her little boys, Kevin, age five, and Ryan, age three. And those little guys love pancakes, and so she had the griddle hot, and she's ready to pour the, the batter in, and she was cooking them, and, and the boys began to argue who would get the first pancake. So their mother saw an opportunity to teach them a lesson here, so she said, now, if Jesus were sitting here, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. 
Upon which Kevin, the five-year-old, turned to his little brother, the three-year-old, and said, Ryan, you be Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's sort of like all of us. We're okay for others to be unselfish, but what about us? You know, something that we see in, in little ones, babies. Babies are very selfish when they're first born. Now, our little granddaughter that we just visited for four days this last week, uh, Junie, she's not, she's not, but everyone else's children are. Um, but seriously, when children cry, they want something and they want it satisfied and they will continue to cry until it's satisfied. And it's interesting though, if they're loved and their needs are met, if they're, if they're wet, they're going to cry and they want to be changed. If they're hungry, they want to eat. If they don't feel well, they need to be comforted. Um, they need medicine, whatever the case might be. But as they grow older, if they grow up in love and their needs are met and they're, they're shown unselfishness and giving by their parents or by their caregivers or whoever is taking care of that little one, they kind of start to learn a little bit of selflessness. So right now, Junie, she loves Cheerios. And she will eat a couple Cheerios, and then she'll want to hand you one. She wants you to eat with her. So there's a little bit of unselfishness. She's willing to share a snack. Little pieces of fruit, whatever she is eating, she'll, she'll eat a couple, and then she'll hold one out to you. So that's kind of unselfish, right? But here's the problem. If we're not, as we grow, able to cultivate an an unselfish or a selflessness aspect in our lives, what happens as we grow older, we realize that that's not necessarily personally beneficial. And so we kind of start sharing our snack less. In fact, exponentially what happens is the, the sin nature becomes full-blown as we grow older. We stop sh wanting to share our snack altogether. That's called selfishness. And if we want to really obey Christ's commands, we really can't be selfish. The, the Bible says, hey, love our enemies. Well, that's not, that isn't right. The, the Bible says, give to those who want to borrow. Christ says, give to those who want to borrow. Don't refuse. Well, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel right. God says, love everyone. That takes time. That takes effort. That's risky. In fact, Paul kind of sums it up a little bit in Philippians chapter 2, verse 1, verse 1 through 4. Let's look at that this morning. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, now I'm not going to run through this real fast because I want you to digest the Word of God. It's much more important than anything that I might say to try to embellish this morning. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if there's any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then Paul's asking the church in Philippi, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit, and of one mind. Now, how do you pull that off? Well, he tells us in the next two verses. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Just thought to digest that for a little bit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. And then, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Now, I want to challenge you just for a moment here at the outset of the message. How much have you done that this week? How much of what you've done, what you've said, where you've been, has, has been caught up in yourself? And have you valued others and their well-being and their interests above your own? Let's look at the definitions that Oxford Languages on the Internet gives us. Of course, that's got to be the right definition, right? It's on the Internet. The dictionary definition of selfish is lacking consideration for others, concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. Now let me interject something here. Isn't it really interesting how we can observe that trait in others so much easier than in ourselves? Man, that is a selfish person. 
What a selfish thing to do. Well, let's look at the opposite. What is selflessness? Selflessness is concerned more with the needs and wishes of others rather than one's own, literally being unselfish. Now, you might be saying, well, hey, if I don't look out for myself, who will? If I don't look out for myself, I'm going to get swallowed alive by society around us. Paul again says this to the church in Corinth, chapter 10. I actually have a right to do anything, you might say, but not everything is beneficial. So you might be able to act this way, but it's not really for the best. You might say, I have the right to do anything, but everything, not everything is constructive. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Now, I guess you can live a life where you're not selfless. I guess you can live a life where you worry about yourself and make sure all of your needs and wants are met to the best of your ability. Or you can live a life where you look out for the interests of others. Paul is suggesting that in order to live a Christ-like life, we need to be selfless. You know, Christ, he could have called down legions of angels to stop the whole process during his beating during his trial, during his crucifixion, but he didn't. Why? Because he was ultimately selfless. He looked out for everyone else's interests rather than his own. Now let's take a little bit of a psychological journey from Dr. Daryl Watson, who is actually a Scottish international teacher and leader. And, and he put it in such a way, I just want to read a tiny little excerpt of how he talks about selfishness. A selfish person uses the terms frequently I, me, mine, as opposed to we, ours, yours, and theirs. So think about it. When you talk or when you're in a conversation or relating something to someone, what usage do you have of which of those terms? I, me, mine, or we, ours, yours, or theirs? Generally, Dr. Watson says that you'll find a selfish person to be pretty keen. He, he likes to be in the, the, the limelight. He's pretty sharp there. And that he is filled with a personal agenda. Now, selfish is actually the absence of empathy, compassion, and the products of those, that selfishness is loneliness, arrogance, pride, even lying, hypocrisy, greed, and idleness. A selfish person looking out for only their own needs. I love this quote from wise leader Gordon Hinckley. Selfishness is a destructive, gnawing, corrosive element in the lives of many people. But the antidote to selfishness is service. Reaching out to those about us, those in the home and those beyond the walls of our home. Selfishness. Doesn't sound very good, does it? So what about selflessness? Selflessness is obviously a marvelous virtue. It's the giving of oneself in serving of others. And I like this part. It's also the giving of oneself to allow oneself to be served by others. Now I want to be transparent with you here for a moment. I used to consider it a virtue if all I did was pour out and serve others. In fact, as a pastor, I thought, well, hey, people aren't here to serve me. I'm here to serve them. And so oftentimes, when someone would want to serve me, I would selfishly refuse that service and say, no, 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 that's okay, I'm fine. But actually what that was was selfishness because it was a false humility. It was actually pride that I didn't allow other people to serve me. See, in order to be selfless, you need to allow people to be blessed by serving you as well as you serving them. It's an attitude. It's a mindset. And I had some people that were good enough to me and honest with me enough to say, Nate, what, Pastor, why don't you let people serve you? And I had to do a, a checkup from the neck up. I still find it hard. I still find it much easier. It seems to be more self-satisfying if I can serve others. But now I realize that others 
want to and need to serve me. It's the same in your life. So in order to be truly selfless, you need to not only look out for the interests of others, but you need to let them, as they're developing that quotient in you, as they walk with Christ and mature, you need to let them serve you. Selflessness and service produces kindness and dispels hypocrisy. It develops con confidence. It develops trust. It develops true, authentic servanthood. Selfishness fosters, or selflessness, I'm sorry, fosters love, confidence, and trust. Did I say selfishness earlier? Selflessness produces kindness and dispels hypocrisy. If I said selfishness, I got mixed up, sorry. Selflessness fosters love, confidence, and trust. So here's a question to ask yourself. Okay, maybe you are okay with actions and things, but what about your words? Are you selfish with your words? Do your words build me up, or do they build others up? Are we selfish with our words? Look at Ephesians 4.29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Well, look at this. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So see, even our words, if they're cutting, if they're judgmental, if they're hurtful. You know the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? That's a lie. That's a total lie. Words hurt. Words cut. And words can't be taken back. Once they're spoken, they're spoken. Now they can be forgiven. They can be explained. And you can work things out, but words hurt. So before you use your words, ask yourself, am I being selfish? Or am I going to use my words to build someone up? Look at this, it says, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So if we want to obey the word of God, then we simply need to do this. Don't talk unless you can say something good. I think all Christians could learn from that. All believers could give ourselves a little bit better showing in the world where believers are watching us if we watched our tongue. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of the Good Samaritan. Probably most of you know it, but it is the, one of the most ultimate acts of selflessness of stories that Jesus gave us. A certain Jewish man, walking down the road, dangerous, treacherous area, was beaten and robbed and left for dead beside the road. Most of us know the story. Two guys who work for the church. One a worker in the church, one a pastor in the church. Walked by, saw the guy laying there, didn't have time, didn't want to, didn't want to get dirty. There's a lot of theological explanation behind that. I won't get into that, because if you have blood on your hands, you can't go into the synagogue, things like that. But I know all those teachings exist, but let's just look at the pure story for a second. They didn't want to get dirty. They didn't want to be inconvenienced. They didn't want to stop. They didn't want to spend money. So guess what? They didn't stop. Now, a cultural enemy of the Jews, a Samaritan was walking by. His heart was filled with compassion. Selflessly, he walked over to the man, scooped him up, cleaned him up, put him on his own beast of burden, took him to a motel, paid the bill, and told them to take care of it and that he would take care of the bill. Now, that's selflessness. So just because we say we love God, just because we say we are of Christ, or are imitators of Christ, and we want to want to be Christians, doesn't mean we're not selfish. Those temple workers weren't bad, they were just selfish. Now look at it for a second and just consider this. If we were laying there, would we want somebody to stop for us? You know, one of the greatest studies on the Golden Rule that I've ever found was a study that Bernard Rimland, who directed the Institute for Child Behavior Research, made. He studied people 
And he asked 10 people who knew these other people for a description of those that they studied, okay? And so the ones that they deemed happy people, if that appeared on this evaluation of this, this test group by the other people, 10 people for each subject. Sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble. 10 people for each subject that was studied. All 10 people had to say that this one person was happy. Had to have that in their description. So he took 10 of those people and he went back and, and he looked and he, and he said, hey, let me ask you this. What other characteristics would you say? In fact, let me ask you this of the one you evaluated. He asked all 10 of each one. Are they selfish or unselfish? And every one of them said they were unselfish. So isn't it interesting that to describe a happy person also described an unselfish person? Now I want to leave this with you today. I want to say that there are ways to be selfless. You know, oftentimes I think uh, we concentrate really, really hard on, on teaching the truths of the Bible and teaching the truths of the Scripture, and we want to be spirit, scripturally accurate. Absolutely. But I think sometimes we maybe fail to give you something to take home with, so I'm going to give you something to take home today. I'm going to give you ways for you to be selfless, and I want you to pick out some of these as I relate them, kind of log them in your brain and say, I'm going to do that this week so I can work on being selfless. Smile. Smile at somebody, not at somebody, when you wouldn't ordinarily do it. Tell the people you love, actually tell them how you feel. Some of us are really bad at that. We love them, but we don't tell them. See, because we just don't think about it. Here's one. Forgive others. The most selfless thing that you can do, I believe, really, is to forgive someone when they don't deserve it. Because in so doing, you imitate Christ. You didn't deserve it. He forgave you. Here's a practical one. Here's some practical ones. Hold the elevator open for somebody. Or hold the door open for somebody. You see somebody coming? Wait for a moment. You're not in that big a hurry. Open the door. Let them go first. Bring a cup of coffee to your coworker. Give up your seat on a bus or a train or, or MARTA. Get up and give up your seat to someone else. You see someone struggling with something that they're hauling or putting in their car or, 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 or um, trying to get through a door? Go help them. Help lift a heavy object. Here's one for you. Don't get mad. Allow someone to merge in traffic when they don't deserve the merge. I knew it. Those of you online, I know you just stopped the broadcast. Look, in the scope of eternity, is it going to matter if you let that person in or not? I've been here almost 23 years. You have to love me still. Okay, it gets more selflessly, selfless. Ready? Offer to babysit for tired parents so they can get a night off. Maybe they just need to go buy groceries. Bake cookies for your neighbor. Actually, take them instead of eating them yourself. <laughs> find, find out somebody's sick? Bring soup. You know what I love about this church? This congregation, and many of you are listening online who are part of our family, you're some of the most selfless people that I know. You find out about needs, you go do them. But keep it up. Keep it up. The world needs us to be selfless. Bring soup to a sick person. Here's one. I didn't want to put this down because I, I don't want to do it. Now, let's just, let's just face facts. I don't want to do any of this stuff, really. Why? Because I'm selfish. That's my nature. That's my default. But check this out. I found myself doing it a lot lately. Stop interrupting. You know what interrupting is? That's being selfish. You know there's people that listen so they can talk. And there's people that listen to listen. My ten I'm going to do better that this week, I promise, Tammy. 
you know, I want to get, I want, I think I know what, I, I think I know better, so if you start with something, I can already tell you don't know as much as I do, so I'm going to interrupt you. I mean, or I just, I can't stand it. I have this many words I got to say, and I got to get them out. That's, a, that's really a selfish way to hold a conversation. You don't need to talk until you need to talk. And if the person pauses to take a breath, that's not a sign you should talk. So I got something practical at church today. I didn't like any of it, but here, repair or fix something for strangers. Some of you have been so selfless to us. Do the same for others. Man, that's a wonderful thing. Here's one. Give compliments to strangers. I saw the coolest hairdo the other day on this beautiful African-American woman and I ran across the Kroger parking lot, and I said, ma'am, and she says, yes, sir. And I said, you got the coolest hair ever. And she's, she says, well, thank you. And then she smiled, the beautiful smile, and I said, and my wife would say, you should always smile. You see, it doesn't take much but it makes the world a better place if you're selfless. I wish I could tell you I do that all the time. I try. Here you go. Give something value, something you value, give it away. I've seen somebody with a beautiful tie one time. Somebody was admiring their tie. They took it off and they gave it to the person. How many of you are willing to do something like that? Maybe you have something in your house. Somebody admires it. They like it. Maybe you gift it to them. I could go on, I've got a bunch, but I need to be done. You get the idea. You know, being selfless can be really fulfilling because being selfish directs all your attention inward and unless you're completely clean and, and, and completely operating like Christ, you might not like always what you see, but if you start acting like Christ and you start doing things like Christ and you start imitating Christ, then maybe you will like what you see and how you feel. And that's what happens when we become selfless. Lord, help me see others, and help me see situations through your eyes. And pray this prayer at the beginning of every day. Lord, help me be a blessing to someone today. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you. Thank you for doing the ultimate selfless act of paying the price for our sins when we didn't deserve it. So, Lord, when we don't think others might deserve it or, or we don't think that we need to do something to show that we want to be selfless and, and to be an imitator of you, help us to do it. Help us to not be selfish in our words and in our actions, but to think about, as your scripture taught us this morning, think about the needs of others for our own. Because surely... You did that for us. Not on the night in which you were betrayed into the hands of sinners to die for those sinners. You instituted what we are about to worship in participating in today, and that is the elements of the Last Supper. You took bread. When you had blessed it, you broke it, and you gave it to your disciples, and you said, this is my body which is broken from you. And then, Father, we know from that broken body there was blood that was produced and represented by the cup of wine, which became the, the symbol of the new covenant. And your disciples experienced that, and they shared that communion. And as Jesus passed it to him, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. Drink in remembrance of me. So today, Father, as we come to you, those of us who have accepted Christ and, and trust in you for our salvation, as we worship through the taking of communion, may we take a moment as we stand and we will come forward and receive those elements. May we take a moment as we go back to our seats before we take them and thank you and praise you for the most selfless act ever. 
In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. If you would stand, and in a moment, Shannon's going to lead us in a prayer. Would you just exit to your left and return back to your right and spend some time before you take those elements and thank God? Take some time for self-examination as well. Shannon, do you lead us in prayer? Let us pray. Lord, we take this time to remember your great sacrifice for our sins. We remember that through your broken body and shed blood, you paid the penalty for our sins. Before we take this bread and drink, this cup, we repent of any sins we've committed. Lord, we ask your forgiveness. We also don't take this moment lightly, but recognize how precious and holy this moment is. We want to take this moment to thank you for your extreme love, and we thank you for the result of your sacrifice. Thank you for giving us your life and for giving our sins and giving us eternal life. In your precious name we pray. Amen. He knows my thoughts, the things that no one sees. He knows my heart, it's every broken piece. Somehow still, I'm held by this one thing. Somehow still, I'm held by this one thing. Yes, Jesus loves me, even me, even me. I stand forgiven and free, even me, even me. He knows my past. The choices I have made When I have wandered When I pushed away Somehow still I'm held by this one thing Somehow still I'm held by this one thing Yes, Jesus loves me Even me, I stand forgiven and free. Even me, even me, even me, yes, even me. And nothing could ever stop this love. Nothing could ever take it away my life was lost his life he gave even to the grave even to the grave yes Jesus loves me even me, even me, I stand forgiven and free. Even me, he loves even me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Even me, even me. Even me, he loves 
we sang it's so true even me even when we are selfish he died for us still I really do like the illustration of food because I, I love food a lot and um, I really like how Pastor Nate said that you know when infants are small you know they take a few bites first before they're willing to share because I kind of feel the same way when I have an abundance it is so easy to be selfless and share and give and when I feel like things are tight or my time is short or I have my own issues to deal with, that's when it becomes very difficult to be selfless. But God loves us even then. And I have found that when I can get out of my own self and begin to focus more on Him and fill my cup with Him, it's so much easier to be selfless. So all those great examples that we heard, you know, do that job anyway, whether you're recognized for it or praised for it or even appreciated for it, do it anyway. Share with others, even when they don't appreciate it. Love others when they don't deserve it. All of these things are so much easier when our cup is full of Christ and he's full in our hearts. So as we conclude our service today, I'm going to invite you to stand and sing Praise to him, first of all, but also he fills our cups. He awakens us to opportunities to serve him, to love others. And so as we celebrate that, I would love for you to stand and celebrate that with us. called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me shaking all the dead are coming back to life i'm back to life hear the song awaken all creation singing we're alive cause you're alive you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive And what a love we found, death can't hold us down We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive And what a love we found, death can't hold us down We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive Your love is greater your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, 
awakens me your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me Amen. As we think about all that we've heard today, um, I'm just going to pray a blessing over you now. I pray that each and every one of us has a heart that is awake, alive, and full of Christ, and that we are able to pull from his cup and share his selfless love with others this week. Thank you guys for worshiping with us today. It was so much fun, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. You're dismissed.